John Coleman and I are here with our favorite philosopher, Bill Jordan. You forgot fabulous, but I'll take it. Um, okay. <laughs> hey, Mr. Fabulous, I, I, uh, I have a baby boomer thing I want to discuss with you. Yeah, okay. I'll, we'll, we'll, we do yeah we'll do a shameless plug. A shameless plug, be okay as a substitute for fabulous. That works. <laughs> sure. Okay. It's, your, it's your show, whatever. I'm a guest. I, Bill, tell me if this is a baby boomer thing, but I have recently kept keep finding myself with song lyrics and I can't remember the song. So the latest one was Sunday morning coming down. I, yeah. Great song. I, I must have heard it a million times because I remembered it, but right. I couldn't remember who sang it. I couldn't remember the rest of the song. Finally went on the computer and looked it up. Chris Christopherson wrote it, sang it with Johnny Cash, and I yeah. must have heard the Johnny Cash version. I looked up the lyrics, just beautiful poetry, just a yeah. wonderful song. Yep. And I, for the life of me, I still can't sing the rest of it, but at least I know what, I, what the hell I was remembering. Does that happen to all baby boomers? I, you know, I don't know that it, it I, maybe because I was in radio, I have a pretty good handle on who sang songs and all that stuff. But what gets me is the, is the ear, I guess they call them earworms, when a song gets stuck in your head. Yes. And you can't get rid of it. And for me, they truly come out of the blue. Like there's no connection to anything I've done recently to when I wake up in the morning and I'm, you know, they're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together. <laughs> and I'm doing the Adams family theme first thing in the morning, getting my coffee. It's like, where did that come from? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, they tell me, and I don't know if this is true. I'm trying to remember if I've tried to do this, maybe I did try to do this. If the song is stuck in your head, I mean, something bizarre, any, well, any song that's stuck in your head, if you will go online and look up the lyrics or go on to YouTube and listen to the whole song, yeah, it erases it. It erases yeah. the, it erases the earworm. I have not, I have not tried that, but you're talking about Sunday morning coming down the, the lyrics, Chris Christopherson, I mean, he's written beautiful lyrics yeah. and beautiful songs. Um, gosh. Um, uh, you know, lyrics for me, um, Rocky Mountain High by John Denver. Oh yeah. Yeah. The very first line in that song, and I never heard it again. I played it on the radio, but when I was on the radio, I wasn't listening to the song. You got the song on, you're pulling commercials. You're, what are you going to talk about next? There's a lot going on. So I yeah. don't know lots of lyrics, but I was listening to John Denver's Rocky Mountain High and earbuds like I have here. And it just sounds better to me on YouTube with the real stereo is separation and stuff. But the line is, he was born in the summer of his 27th year, coming home to a place he had never been before. And I heard that and I was like, wow. Yeah. He was born when he was 27, coming home to a place he's never been before. And another song that, I mean, a, 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 a fellow, uh, uh, disc jockey, when I call him disc jockey, radio personality, one of my friends up in Roanoke years ago when, when the song was new, Bob Seeger's Against the Wind. He, oh, pointed yeah. the he pointed the line out. I wish I didn't know now what I didn't know then. Yeah. And he yeah. did not like that lyric. Oh, really? Mm. He ran it by, I forgot what another famous, I don't know if it was one of the Eagles or somebody. And he said, man, is this, is this any good? And the guy's like, man, that's a brilliant line. And that's the line people remember. Uh, I, yeah. I hear quoted a lot from from Bob Seeger. Uh, sure. You got any favorite lyrics, uh, Art, uh, John? Any more? So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm going to jump in here by saying that um, throughout my entire life, I have never been a, a big concert goer. I think the first one I ever went to was when uh, I was maybe uh, uh, dating my wife, uh, maybe a Neil Sedaka concert at a um, uh, Neil Diamond. And right. until I saw Springsteen about 50 years later, which I really enjoyed, he's an amazing performer. Uh, I've never really been into music. Uh, and so I've never had these earworms. Uh, and I admire you guys for having it because I know that, I know particularly John. John and I would go to a convention and we'd be really tired after shooting all day uh, and interviews and, and, and B-roll. And then he'd see a little combo trio in the tucked away in the lobby someplace and he said oh wait let's sit up here let's shoot these guys 
Uh, and I've never had a, although I do admit that, uh, while I do like the, the music of Springsteen and many other artists, the only people that I listen to over and over and over again, uh, I was running a company up in San Francisco, which meant that I was, I would go up there Monday morning and come back Friday night uh, to my home in Southern California. And I had the blue and the red CDs, or al they also had albums, of Queen. And I would tend to get into the office at six in the morning before everybody, because I get up in the morning early anyway. And I'd put them on loud before anybody sh came in. <laughs> and it would echo through the whole place. And I would play both uh, CDs back to back, you know, over a period of two or three days. <laughs> And I love their music, uh, always have, but I've, I've had these earworms and I have my, my son and two daughters. My, one of my daughters was a deadhead. For years, she ran around the country, uh, country going around the world. She seen it overseas, right. watched the deadhead. And I don't know where they got it from. I probably more from my wife, uh, who was always a big fan of music. But I know, John, you're a huge fan of music. I love all kinds of music. And you know, our, our uh, friend, John Mariani, um, mm. who is the virtual gourmet, we interview him. Uh, he's on twice weekly, uh, twice uh, a month, like you are, Bill, on Celebrating Act Two. John Mariani is a former musician, uh, partnered with mm. Don McLean in high school to sing wow. uh, folk songs, things like that. Um, and so when I get together with John Mariani, we go through show tunes, we go through pop tunes from our high school years, we go through modern tunes, and I'm just not as good as the lyrics as John Mariani, as he remembers, you know, the chords, the lyrics, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But it's the lyrics for me, because it's the poetry of certain, sometimes it's just that one line, like Sunday morning coming down. To right. me, that one line was poetry in itself. But the whole song is is beautiful. Um, there's another John Denver song you mentioned, Bill, Annie's song. Oh yeah. And I can't remember the exact words, but it's something like something in a cup, drink it up. Love, love in a cup, drink it up. Just beautiful, just beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. The lyrics are are the what catch me mostly. You know, when uh, the, with the passing of Jimmy Buffett. Um, mm -hmm. Back in uh, Labor Day weekend, I saw watch, watched a couple of interviews with him afterwards, and he would talk about these songs that would come to him, like Margaritaville. He wrote in ten minutes. <laughs> I would love to uh, to be with an artist. I've always thought this to be with an artist when they crafted the song, to to just to watch and hear them how they came up with it, yeah. and how they put the lyrics together, and be in the recording studio and the engineer side to watch somebody record a hit song. I've yeah. always wanted to do like, that's the take. That's the one you're going to be hearing coming out of the radio or yeah. out of Pandora or, you know, Sirius XM. Right. That's the one. There's one song lyric that may I, I hope I can share with you guys, because I don't think you're going to stop me at this point because it would be rude. You guys wouldn't do that to me. So <laughs> here on my recent 69th birthday, and I had seen sometime over this past year, the Clint Eastwood movie, The Mule. And either he wrote the song or uh, Toby Keith wrote the song. It's called Don't Let the Old Man In. And it has to do with getting older. And the line is, when he rides up on his horse and you feel that cold, bitter wind, look out your window and smile and don't let the old man in. And it's like, okay, that's, that's my theme for this year. That's great. That's by, the way, theme. by the way, Bill, uh, I think that uh, the closest that we got to seeing people either create songs or modify them at the last minute was the recent uh, documentary uh, on the Beatles done by the guy down in uh, New Zealand uh, who, who did that documentary. And you, you could see the last session that uh, uh, the, the Beatles did, and then they did the rooftop concert, and then they broke up shortly after that. But yep. that was a, a very that was a very creative uh, uh, session. Uh, Billy Joel has also spoken about uh, a, a lot of the stuff they did. Hamilton, uh, I'm a huge fan of, uh, of musicals, and I've seen hundreds of them, literally some of them twenty, thirty times around the world. But uh, 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 Linda Manuel Miranda uh, has been interviewed many times about. It how he got the idea for a song and then he plays it. So they all play it a little bit. Sometimes they play, get the tune first. Sometimes they get the words first. 
Uh, sometimes they collaborate with people. It is fascinating stuff. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite groups as far as a baby boomer growing up, and I still like uh, their solo efforts, Burton Cummings and uh, Randy uh, Backman uh, from the Guess Who, uh, mm. like 1970-ish, These Eyes and No Time and No Sugar Tonight. But new, No Sugar Tonight, New Mother Nature. Burton Cummings had written No Sugar Tonight. Randy Backman had written uh, New Mother Nature, and they just decided they were kind of like in the same key, and they decided just to blend them, <laughs> and it worked. Yeah. If you remember yeah. the song, if you don't remember, just, you know, uh, New Mother Nature, um, uh, and now I can't think of the first one. I had just said it. Um, no Sugar Tonight. Mm. No Sugar Tonight by Burton Cummings, and then Randy Backman writing... Uh, New Mother Nature, and they put them together on the single, and it's absolutely magic. Yeah, absolute magic. Well, I want to I want to propose a toast to earworms, <laughs> and those of you lucky you enough go. to get them from time to time, Perfect they're timing. creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together. You got you got it. all right. Well, anyway, for my fellow baby boomers, live your life, forget your age embrace the boom celebrate Amen, brother that's it guys thank you for more on celebrating act two visit our webpage follow us on facebook subscribe to us on youtube and tell your friends celebrating act two is the user manual for the second half of your life